Hello, today I want to give you a first look at Fractal's brand new Lumen AIO. Now I've got the 360mm version here, but it also comes in 240 and 280mm options. Now as you can see, I've got the version that is ARGB on the fans, but it is also available with black fans if you prefer that look. The fans are Fractal's brand new Aspect PWM fans, and one of the nice things about them is that both the power and the ARGB is daisy chainable. And for your peace of mind, the cooler comes with a five year warranty. Okay, let's show you how to install it. So taking a look at our radiator, we can see we've got the pump built into the radiator. We've got a wire coming from it. There's a little notch in the radiator which lets the wire pass so it's not gonna catch on the fans. And then we've got a three pin connector coming from the end of the wire. The first thing for us to do is to go ahead and get our fans onto the radiator. So obviously you need to decide on the orientation that you're gonna want them in your particular case. In this particular case, we have two brackets, one that needs to go on each side, and we're gonna to need to install this in between the fans and the radiator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these long radiator screws to go through the fan, through the bracket, and into the radiator. Okay, that's the fans on the radiator with the bracket in between. Well, what I'm going to do now is talk you through the different connectors because I find this much easier to do on the table than in the cramped confines of a case. So as we've already mentioned, coming from our pump, we've got a three pin connector. We're going to need to plug this into our pump header on our motherboard. Coming from each of our fans, we have two different connectors. The first is a four pin PWM connector. One of the nice things that we already mentioned about these fans is they are daisy chainable. So we're going to daisy chain the three fans together and then we're going to plug the end into our CPU fan header. I'm going to do all this after I've installed the bracket in the case because the wires are going to be much easier to pull through to the back of the case if they're not already connected up. The other connector coming from each of the fans is a standard 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector. And again, they are daisy chainable. So we've got a daisy chainable connector beside it. So we're going to link the three fans together and then what we're going to do is plug the end into one of the ARGB headers on our motherboard. The final connector for us to plug in goes down the bottom of our water block. So I'll go ahead and plug it in. On the other end of the cable we've got a three pin five volt ARGB connector. Now as we've mentioned we're going to plug the ARGB connectors from our fans into our motherboard we're going to have one spur daisy chainable connector, so we're going to plug this into the fans. Okay, what we can go ahead and do now is slide everything into the case. I'm just going to go ahead and pull all the wires coming from the fans through and into the case, and then line the bracket up with the case itself. So you can see now our hard work of connecting the radiator to the bracket is going to pay off, because we've only got four screws to secure everything into the case. Then we can go ahead and put our case's front panel back on. In case you're wondering, this is the new Fractal Torrent PC case. I did a full build guide and case review in it last week. So if you're interested in that, you'll find a link to it in the description. Okay, so I've brought all the cables through to the back of the case and I'm going to start daisy chaining them together. So let's start off with the PWM connectors. We'll connect the fans together. Okay, that's the three fans connected together. So I'm gonna bring this end up through this cutout and into the front of the case and we'll plug it in in a minute. Okay, exactly the same thing with our ARGB connectors. We'll go ahead and connect them up. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this end through to the front of the case. And what you'll notice, we've still got an additional header here. We can go ahead and plug the cable coming from our water block into. So the one header on our motherboard is going to power the three fans and also the water block. Final cable we need to bring through to the front of the case is this three pin connector, which is going to power our pump. 
Okay, so the three headers that we're going to need to plug in are at the top of the motherboard. So we've got our CPU fan header, which we're going to plug in the cable coming from the three fans. Our pump header, we're going to plug the single cable coming from the pump. And then we've got our ARGB connector here. So we'll go ahead and get these plugged in. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and pull the access cable through to the back. Okay, so take a look at the bracket. We've got Intel written on one side, so I'm going to turn that so the Intel side is facing the table. Next, we're going to need to slide one of these through the hole on each end. The hole on each end, although it looks like one hole, it's actually two separate holes. So it's the one that closest to the middle of the bracket that we're going to want to put this through. So we'll go ahead and lift the end up, slide it through the one into the middle. And then what we're going to need to do is rotate this round just to the clips in the bracket. And you can see there, it's just clipped in. Then we're going to need to take one of these plastic washers and slide it over the top, and this is going to secure things into place. And then it's just the same thing for the other three corners. Okay, we can go ahead and slide the bracket through the back of the motherboard. Next, we can go ahead and put a spacer over each corner. Now we need to go ahead and remove the plastic protection from the back of the coal plate. And it's good to see we've got thermal paste pre-applied. Then all we need to do is go ahead and lower this down with the bracket. Once we're happy, we've got things in place, we can go ahead and put a thumb screw on each corner. And then we can go ahead and tighten things up with a screwdriver. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and route the RGB cable through to the back of the case. Now, if you have gone ahead and installed the water block in a different orientation and you want to rotate the logo, you can do this. All we need to do is give things a slight turn anti-clockwise and then we can go ahead and lift this up. We can go ahead and put it back in whatever orientation we want the logo to appear in and then give a slight turn clockwise again to secure things in place. So I'm obviously, it was the right orientation, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in that way. Okay, last thing to do is plug the ARGB cable coming from our water block into the splitter from our fans. So I think the cooler looks incredible and I particularly like the RGB effects on the water block. But how did it perform in terms of thermals and noise? So looking at the temperatures and these were incredibly good. The only other cooler that I had used in this case with this particular CPU was Notch's NHD15. So I'm going to compare to that. So in terms of CPU temperatures, our CPU idled one degree cooler than with the NHD15. And under a 20 minute IDA 64 stability test, our CPU was 6 degrees killer. Take a look at the noise levels. The noise levels at idle were 1 decibel louder with the lumen compared to the NHD15, while there was no difference to the noise levels during an IDA 64 stability test. The next thing I wanted to do was test for the pump running at 100% rather than on the standard fan curve. This didn't make any difference at all to the temperatures, however, our idle noise increased by 4 decibels and the noise during IDA 64 stability test increased by 1 decibel. So if you are getting the pump, I definitely wouldn't run it at full speed and I would go into the BIOS and use one of the standard DC fan curves. So how do the noise levels compare to Fractal's previous generation of AIO, the Celsius Plus Prisma? And I did use this cooler in this case with a different CPU so although I can't share the temperature differences, I can certainly give you the noise levels. In this particular case, the noise levels at idle were 32, while the noise levels during IDA 64 stability test were 55 decibels. So overall, the new Lumen AIO is quieter than the previous generation. The only slight observation that I would point out is that you can notice the pump noise a little bit more with the Lumen cooler than the Celsius Plus Prisma cooler. So I'm very impressed with both the looks and the cooling performance of Fractal's brand new Lumen AIO and I look forward to using it in a number of future builds. 
So hopefully you find the video useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.